and the quirkier side of life. The Todd Starnes Commentary. Earlier this week, I first told you about a military manual that teaches white straight Christians have an unfair advantage over other races. They issued a warning about a so-called white male club and directed troops to support leaders of color. An equal opportunity officer who listens to my commentary sent me the material. It's his job to teach those briefings, and he told me his conscience would no longer allow him to foment racism. You can read the entire report at foxnews.com. Since my report came out, I've received several dozen messages from members of the military thanking me for exposing this politically correct drivel and sharing their own stories of reverse racism. This cannot and must not stand. We are a nation where all men are created equal, where men are judged by the content of their character, not the color of their skin. I'm Todd Starnes. We're going to be doing some more coverage of that story and much more related to the military and the indoctrination of what they've seen just in the last... We talked a little about it with Arnold Allart and seeing a culture and what it's doing to the culture. And Arnold Allart really had some keen insights into the fact that this is, would be the last bastion for conservative values. And I encourage you to check out his work as well, Arnold Allard, referencing the purge in the military. Or the, it's a, there's evidence of it. He, he just put it out there, which I thought was, there, there's a lot of evidence. That all said, big week in Washington, to say the least. Thank you, Captain Obvious. He joined the show. Crane Durham's nothing but truth. Captain Obvious makes an appearance almost every day here on the program. Yeah, it's a big week. And I, this week I was really looking forward to and have been looking forward to speaking to this man, Seton Motley. He is the president of Less Government. He joins us now. Seton, how are you? I'm doing well, sir. How are you? I'm doing well. I, 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 I want to open up with this story that came up on Anderson Cooper. Okay. Yes. And if if we if if that clip's a problem, we can make a jump to another clip. Okay. Let's. Uh, Anderson Cooper, you're aware of the fact that insurance companies have been silenced by this administration, a gag order. And I know you've covered this in the past. So when I say you're aware of it, you're like, thank you, uh, Captain Obvious is really here, but. This is not a new trend within the Obama administration about trying to silence those who disagree with a policy or have the truth about a particular policy. Your thoughts? No. Okay. Not at all. No, I mean, they've been, they, they've been bullying people throughout the five years they've been there. Uh, you've got, I mean, look at the IRS scandal. Mm-hmm. That's one giant bully fest of anybody that's applying for a nonprofit status. You've got uh, the AP uh, subpoenas. You've got the James Rosen subpoenas at Fox News. Um, th- th- this administration has been bullying people incessantly ever since it walked in the front door of the White House. So, yeah, it doesn't surprise me that this is happening now at the insurance companies. What surprises me is that they were so... They know their industry. They know their business. It surprises me tremendously that they ever went along with Obamacare. That's what's disconcerting, because now they're over a barrel, and the question is, can they be saved from this death spiral? I mean, I'm pretty pessimistic. I'm an optimistic guy, except I'm pretty pessimistic about what, once a government program exists, I think the chances of getting rid of it are nil. I think we still have, on our landline phone line bill, a tax to pay for the Spanish-American War, and I'm not kidding. So, but with what's going on with Obamacare, I'm actually optimistic, cautiously so, that this bill might actually go away. Again, I don't understand why the industry thought they were friendly. I mean, uh, and, and, and that they would write a bill that would help them. That surprises me. And then once they saw the bill, because they obviously would watch it very closely, uh, it affects their livelihoods, I'm surprised they thought it would work out to their advantage. Yeah, it, it is interesting, it, well put, because 
Which I is, almost look at them. The, them. Yeah, I almost look at it like, well, what we're going to do is allow you to live a little longer to si single payer. So you want to take advantage of it right now. And they thought, well, it's a little more time left. Perhaps something will happen. Well, something has happened. The truth has come out about them knowing, President Obama knowing about the people that are not going to be able to keep their plan. And here the president is ye yesterday talking about this. And I, excuse me, I probably, it, was it yesterday or was it the day before? I get confused. It's been a big week. But here he is. And it's interesting because he has the ability not only to distort, but go back on the attack. And I just wanted to get your thoughts on this. Roll it. For the vast majority of people who have health insurance that works, you can keep it. For the fewer than 5% of Americans who buy insurance on your own, you will be getting a better deal. So anyone peddling the notion that insurers are canceling people's plan without mentioning that almost all the insurers are encouraging people to join better plans with the same carrier and stronger benefits and stronger protections, while others will be able to get better plans with new carriers through the marketplace, and that many will get new help to pay for these better plans and make them actually cheaper. If you leave that stuff out, you're being grossly misleading, to say the least. Seton, translate. Well, first of all, he left that out for three years. <laughs> you know? That was brilliant. Get that man a uh, round of applause. That is the best line I've heard yet. Go ahead. Keep going, my friend. That's great. He left that out for three years knowing the latest number, I think, I, saw, I think it was Forbes that had the report. They knew in 2010 that 93 million people would lose their insurance. 93 million. We think it's bad now with cancellations. Wait till the illegally delayed employer mandate kicks in. That's, as he's, as he's pointing out now, for short-term cover, it's going to lead to long-term problems because he's right, only 5% of the market. Me, by the way, I'm affected by this. I have his health savings account, which is now basically outlawed in this country. Um, I, that's the 5%. The problem is the 95% that get their insurance through their employers, they won't really start to see the hammer fall until the employer mandate gets close and kicks in, which, of course, he delayed by a year. Uh, illegally and unilaterally. So he's right that r right now it's small, but look how angry people are with 5% of the market affected. Wait till the other 95% falls. And people who work for big corporations, you know, thousands of employees, all of a sudden these, em these employers go, you know what, you're all off. Or kicking into the exchange, which of course is the ultimate. That's what they planned all along. This is what they want. They want everybody in the exchange. This is single payer. I thought of, I think we discussed it. I thought it would take eight to ten years to get to that point. It's looking like the, that's been accelerated a little bit, has it not? Yeah, big time. Tell me something because we were. I'm glad you mentioned the other 93 million that they know about regarding the. Please. Ago, yeah, three, three years ago. Years yeah, ago. and that's the other shoe to drop. Really quickly, if you don't mind, thumbnail in a thumbnail way, walk us through what you just said because some people are learning about this for the first time. Ovik Roy was on Megan Kelly last night talking talking about it. I know you've been all over this, but walk us through because some people are sitting there going, "Wait, that's not 14 million. That's that's not 19 million. Did he say 93 million? 93 See? because that includes back in 2010." When they figured this out, I think it was June of 2010, when they wrote the reg, and, and, and I, think it was, I think it was the IRS analyzing HHS's reg, the, the, the reg that is now killing all these individual market health insurance plans. Back then, Obama hadn't yet illegally delayed the employer mandate. So they were running the numbers for the, the effect of the regulation on the entire industry including the 95% who get their health insurance through their employer rather than the 5% like me who get it in the individual market. So when they ran those numbers, that's how they got to 9 3, 93 million people losing their health care. We haven't seen the, but the tip of the iceberg because he illegally delayed the employer mandate to put off past the 2014 election, I might point out, put off the effect of the employer mandate on that 95% of the people who get their insurance through their employers. 
May I ask you why do you think the this lie is sticking? I, I you I, I get the idea you'll say hey Crane because it's hitting everybody and they're they're <laughs> actually experiencing it. But they lied about Fast and Furious. They lied about Benghazi. They've lied this about the IRS. In their Go ahead. Yeah. This is hitting people in their wallets. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna say this. It'll sound crass, but I think every you and everybody listening will know it's not. Four people died in Benghazi. At least one died as a result of Fast and Furious. That's a cr- incredibly terrible, but it only affects the families of the four people and the one person, right? I mean, that's awful, but if the media is not going to report it... In a well, way yeah, and, and here, here's the deal, Seton, real quick. I want, I, obviously, it affects us, it, all of us, but if the media if is not going to... about it. Yeah. But, but the thing is, yeah, the media ahead. doesn't report it. Right. The media doesn't have to report this. Because people are opening envelopes from their insurance companies and, and being told they're being canceled. Right. So they, 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 we always talk about bypassing the media, right? Mm-hmm. This is bypassing the media. This is the insurance companies contacting Americans are going, you're done because of Obamacare. Sorry. So we didn't bypass the media. Obama did. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's going to be his greatest downfall. So he lied, and the reason it's so huge is he lied so long, so often, about something that's very important to a lot, millions of Americans, and now it's actually being demonstrated. Do you know that the federal government has a law that says that gas stations cannot list the taxes individually at a gas pump? I did not know that. Yeah, you know, when you yeah. look at the gas pump, it says includes all taxes at mm-hmm. the price. That's as close as they can get, because they don't want you to see how, the damage government does. This is the American people seeing the damage government does, and they can't dilute it, they can't spin it. It's millions of Americans getting envelopes saying, you've been canceled because of a government policy, and that's going to be very tough to reel in, and I don't think they can. Do you think this will be for many crossing the Rubicon when it comes to looking at the media and a worldview change, certainly, and how they're getting their information? Kind of like what conservatives, what we've been talking about for years, people are finally saying, wait a second, they're not a bunch of nut jobs. The media is corrupt. Right, and, and I think you and I discussed this a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Short-term, Ted Cruz and, and the Tea Party took a hit for the shutdown. And I say, let's talk about it a year from now, when yes, it's October did. of 2014, a month before an election, and Obamacare has been wreaking havoc for another 12 months, and the American people can look back and go, well, at least someone tried to prevent this. And let's right? speak to that. Yeah, it, it is an excellent point, and we're probably going to play that clip uh, next year when we are right beforehand, because... <laughs> I want I mean, you to make sure you get credit for what you said because it was it was really good. It was right on. Now, Seton. Um, and, and, and yeah, I, I think now because it's exploding. So, I mean, look at the chronology. The government was shut down for what was it, sixteen, seventeen days, because they, uh, uh, the uh, the Republicans wanted to delay or to fund of Obamacare. And, and 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 Obama wouldn't do it, and the Democrats wouldn't do it. Four days later, Thursday of the next week. There are Democrats lining up asking for a delay of Obamacare of the individual mandate because of the damage it's doing to the health care market. Less than four days after Obama shut down the government to prevent it, he has members of his ranks going, let's see what the Republicans wanted to do four days ago when we called them terrorists and t- hostage takers and bombs strapped to their chests. And to that, I, we can now add, oh, and they're correct. <laughs> and let's go to this, because it's not only about 14, I believe, Obviously, this all goes to 2016, and it seems they, Democrats are certainly good at sticking together when it comes to demonizing a particular character. Now, the motivational speaker himself, Harry Reid, on Rachel Maddow's program, made this statement regarding Ted Cruz. Roll it. Well, it's Ted Cruz. Who's someone else? I have to turn that. I'm not going to say what my political cap is because I really don't know. But with Ted Cruz, I'm, I'm sure this will help him raise more money. If I didn't care so much about our country, I would hope he would get the Republican nomination for president. Because that would be the end of the Republican Party. In what sense? He stands for everything America doesn't. 
So, do you think this is going to work? <laughs> well, again, <laughs> Ted Cruz says this because it's self-serving. They, they get, they, they, the left tells you who they're afraid of and what they're afraid of. And they're obviously afraid of Ted Cruz. They weren't afraid of Mitt Romney because we heard all those in the Republican primary, the media and the left, part in the redundancy, say, well, if they were smart, they'd nominate Mitt Romney. And now we hear if the Republicans are smart, they'll, they'll nominate Chris Christie. Um, this guy, this guy, this guy is saying, oh, you know, I hope they nominate him. Now that's that's similar, but I I think at the end of the day, when they're when when they're he's saying that in a cynical way, when they, when they talk about Mitt Romney, when they talk about Chris Christie, is the best thing for Republicans is to nominate someone like Chris Christie. When they, when he says this, he wants to do it. To, he thinks if Cruz is a nominee, he'll blow up the Republican Party forever. I would argue, given that we are not under the, uh, under the second term of the McCain administration or the first term of the Romney administration, <laughs> I'd rather go with someone like Cruz than someone like Christie in 2016. I think uh, I'll look forward to playing excerpts of our interviews in the last year, especially in the last few months, Seton, because you've been once again on it. And I remember you making the statement, why do we always listen to the people that seek to end us for advice on how to win? It's, it's Seton Motley, ladies and gentlemen. He is a treasure. President of West Government, and you need to have a great weekend. I'm demanding. You too. Thank you very Thanks. much. I'll, I'll talk to you next week, and have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you, brother. All right. Coming up, Bruce Thornton. And a clip that Seton referred to from Ovik Roy, actually, the information. you got to hear this again. It's huge. Big time. Thank you, Dick Cheney. Happy Friday, everybody. Don't forget, God knows you. God loves you. He created you. You're worth it. And he loves you wherever you're at. AFR Talk.